Thus saith the Lord that formed thee, O Israel, I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, Give them up, and to the south, Do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Zola Levitt presents Signs of the End. Shalom, hello again. Uh, for tonight's program, we've come to a special location, our music studio in Dallas, where we record our albums in order to have uh, this acoustical room, this nine-foot Steinway grand piano, because of uh, our guest tonight. Our subject, the signs of the end, is uh, one, of the, one of the more pleasant signs of the end, is, is the Jewish people can come out of where they have been hiding in the ends of the earth, uh, the northeast, south, and west, especially from the north, Isaiah says, and Jews have been coming out of Russia as, as one sign, and uh, one of those is uh, my guest, Alyosha Ryabanov, who is a concert pianist, a wonderful musician. And so we brought the program here uh, so you could hear him play on a fine instrument in, in, in a good location. So, Alyosha, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Um, we're interested in you as a Russian and as a Jew and as a believer in the Messiah. <laughs> so... Uh, your career in Russia, you didn't have the advantages of Van Cliburn, but you, you play like him. Uh, how, did, how was it over there for you? Uh, well, of course, I studied music since I was five years old. And, you know, my parents were musicians. My, my father played the violin and my mother played classical guitar. And my grandfather was a violinist and composer. So when I turned five years of age, they gave me no choice. And oh, well, practice. Yeah. <laughs> that's, you, that's when you have to start. And by the age of 14, I finally learned to love music. I see. Yeah. Uh, it was really a forced uh, <laughs> situation. Uh, somewhat, yeah. yes. But And so many people, there's an old joke uh, when you come to uh, Israel, uh, when a Russian comes to Israel, if he's not carrying a violin case, it's because he's a pianist. And uh, you are a pianist. Uh, did you have a chance to go to a real music school over there? Yeah, I went to music school and then music college uh, where I got my mas not master's, uh, bachelor's degree uh -huh. in piano and composition. Uh -huh. And after, right after that, we emigrated from Kiev to the United States. Okay, so you come straight to America. And, of course, you have a ministry, and this is, is something you do here. Yes. Concertize and, and yes. testify and so on. And I'm going to come to that, but I want to talk about your composing. You write beautiful sonatas about Israel. Yes. A wonderful thing to do. Uh, can absolute music be about a land? That's interesting to me. Well, I think uh, when I started to read the Bible, I've, I read a lot about music, wonderful things. When the Levites used to worship God with music, uh -huh. um, sometimes the glory of God would come in. I know. Second you know, like Chronicles. And <laughs> music is a wonderful thing, you know. Uh, to it's like to me, it's a glimpse of heaven. Yes. Yeah, I agree with that. It's something that God, you know, music that doesn't have words, that's good. So that we can just. Let uh, the Spirit of God speak to us through every note. And it's, it's a real blessing that way. Until you put it that way, I never thought of it, but I know you're right. <laughs> I composed an album once called Beyond Words, and I always, out of all my tapes, I seem to take that one myself if I want to meditate and think about the Lord. But anyway, I want to hear some of your music, and uh, you have several uh, pieces to offer us, and uh, can you can you uh, play a selection? What what could you play for us? Well, I'd like to start, uh, I have a number of praise songs. Yes. And it's very simple. They start with praise song number one, and mm -hmm. when they want to make a different one, I, play, I call it praise song number two, and etc. But this one is called um, Spring Waters of the Jordan. Spring Waters of the Jordan. Inspired both by Jordan River and the scripture in Ezekiel chapter 47. It talks about the river that flowing, flowing from the temple of God. And wherever it goes, it gives life and you know, restores everything. The, the trees on both sides of the river with the leaves that are healed. And it's just a wonderful picture of God's spirit moving. How lovely. So, Please. Spring Waters of the Jordan.
wonderful, Alyosha. It's <laughs> it's just so like the Jordan. I've watched the Jordan go by a lot of times. That's saying it musically, and it's wonderful. Thank you for playing that for us. Sure, my pleasure. Yes. Did, did you go to Israel and you look at the river uh, to get this inspiration? Or? Yeah, I was in Israel twice, uh, once in 19, 1984 and 1990. Uh -huh. And I, I saw the river, and it did remind me about uh, the river in Ezekiel 47. Uh -huh. That uh, the river that actually ends at the sea, and it says the waters of the sea get healed. Mm -hmm. And as I sometimes interpret that yeah, the water in Scripture the symbol of the Spirit of God. That's where he, God is moving. And I looked forward to, to, to the scripture when the Spirit uh, of grace and supplication will be poured on the house of David and they see him who was pierced. Yes. Do you, do you get the impression uh, uh, today, I mean, Israel is troubled, obviously. Uh, when you were there, did you get this feeling of uh, that, that uh, was how things are going, good or bad, or what was your impression? Well, in the natural, they were bad. Yeah. In uh, everything else, uh, they were good. A as a believer, I could see as no with different eyes, mm -hmm. you know, with that hope. Yeah. And, uh, you know, of course, you, you, if you talk about the government, they, they try to solve a lot of problems with human solutions. And, and of course, it's normal, you know, being a human being. And but God has his solutions. And, you know, this is a comfort mm -hmm. to know that and one of the most exciting things is, is uh, what led me actually to the Lord is that when I came to this country and I wanted to learn about my heritage, and uh, I asked, is there a good book on the Jewish history? And I was told, yes, there is a very good book on the Jewish history, and it's called the Bible. Oh, yeah. Try that one. And so when I started to read the Bible, and I started to read about my own nation and the God of Israel, one of the most exciting thing was to know that uh, this wonderful prophecies about uh, restoration of the nation. Uh, I mean, I had hoped that one day there will be an end to anti-Semitism. So that was starting to get them going to. Sure. Oh, what a wonderful thing to say. Let me address, <laughs> yeah, we have a large Jewish audience. My Jewish brothers and sisters, if you will pick up the Bible and read it, you will see who the Messiah is. Rabbi, if you will read it, you will see who the Messiah is. Don't think that um, uh, because you are Jewish, you understand everything about Messiah. Actually, it's been my experience, Jewish people are not conversant with Scripture. And this is one of the most amazing anomalies of history because are not we the authors of it? Is it not an Israeli book written and published by Jews, translated for English for use over here, and in Russian, if it gets there, for use where Alyosha comes from? <laughs> I challenge you, do what he did, pick it up and read it. That would be a way to find out what God has said. Thank you for that testimony. I can't help improvising on it. You have more music. How about another selection? Okay, it's, this is another praise song. Uh, in this case, this is praise song number seven. It's called uh, On the Wings of the Spirit, uh, from the verse from Isaiah 40, where it talks about uh, chapter 31, uh -huh. about uh, those who wait upon the Lord, and He will renew their strengths, and they'll be mounted up with wings uh, of eagle. Yeah. And, and when I would run, you know, my feet would not get tired. And it's a wonderful scripture. So I, uh, I always pray for that to, to get through this piece. It's you know, <laughs> difficult. Okay, let's do it.
come with Zola and see the land of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Experience the Holy Land. For tour information, write Zola, Box 12268, Dallas, Texas, 75225. Well, if you want to meet some talented Russian people, come to Israel. <laughs> Actually, we meet more and more of them. And uh, I've said it before, we come into the airport and uh, half of the billboards are in Russian. Uh, so many Russian people have come that this is the place to see them and talented people and people like Alyosha. Fun to meet them. How did you get out? Well, I mean, after all, you were you were in a pretty well-closed country. Uh, uh, yes, of course, at that time... Um Communism was in full power and anti-Semitism was very strong. Yes. And I felt, you know, anti-Semitism and I felt like I was in bondage. You know, even though uh, it's hard to know that you're in bondage unless you know freedom uh -huh. first. But, um, I mean, you couldn't, I couldn't pursue what I wanted to pursue. Oh, I, I know the feeling. I mean, when I yeah. went to Moscow, my word, I could not step out of the hotel without people walking up. Where are you going? What are you doing? You know, a yeah. terrible feeling and I was only a visitor. And so I realized that even being Jewish, it would be very difficult for me to pursue my career. Because uh -huh. it's very difficult and you can, because of anti-Semitism. And if you ask me, how do I know that I was Jewish? How did I know? Well, probably because of anti-Semitism. So if I would know somebody to remind me about it. Boy, they, uh, they it. fool themselves, and, don't they? <laughs> yeah. And so um, I saw many of my friends and relatives started to leave Kiev. And I thought, well... In order to get freedom, I, I should go to a free country. Uh -huh. And that, that's all I have. Well, that's why, you know, we're we thinking the natural, because later on when I came to the United States of America and became a believer, I realized a lot of people are in bondage here too, mm. except they have freedom to choose bondage if they want to and, or stay free. That's very interesting. Yeah, but, freedom to unbelieve, folks. And that's right. God bless America. But um, I, when we applied for permission to immigrate, I mean, it was dangerous. It was difficult. I was full of anxieties. I didn't know what's going to happen, whether they even put me away for trying to emigrate. Yeah. And those years, anything. And so I was full of anxiety. And I thought, well, who can give me a comfort? And for the first time, I started to think about God. Now, of course, I didn't know a lot about God because I grew up in the environment of atheism. Yeah. Atheism, was, atheism was the only religion that was allowed to be practiced. And I call it a religion because only by faith you must believe that God doesn't exist. <laughs> but um, Interesting. <laughs> uh, and atheism, I had to study in school. I mean, it was a required class. Mm -hmm. So as a... But interesting thing, that they teach you a lot about God in atheism. In order to prove that God doesn't exist, they have to explain to you who doesn't exist. And they accidentally uh, introduced you to God. That, that's <laughs> right. So you learn some things about God. Gosh, it, it's, just a lot, it's, it's very Jewish to, to learn from being on the wrong end of an argument. It's being persecuted and get stronger and more spiritual because of it. Yeah, so I ended up praying to God and I asked him to get me out of Kiev. And that showed me that he is really, truly living God. And about a week passed and we received permission to immigrate. And, 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 and you brought this wonderful music with you, uh, or you, you... Well, you know, at that time, I, you know, I just uh, finished the college, and when I came, we came to Chicago, and I continued for three years to study for my master's program. But I wasn't composing these compositions yet. I was still searching about uh, the Lord, and I've shared a little bit earlier how I started to read the Bible. Yeah. And it was interesting when I got to the New Testament... I was puzzled, you see, because I was warned, in, you know, in the Jewish community that Jews shouldn't read the New Testament. Uh -huh. And I just asked, well, why... The most in, popular Israeli book. In, why, why in a free country? You know, I was already told in in other place of what to read and what not to read. I mean, can't they just... You always do what they tell you not to do. <laughs> Elio, I, I know you have a piece of music called Celebration. Yeah, uh, this piece really reflects the joy that God put in my heart and looking forward to the restoration of my nation and, you know, real celebration. That, lovely. That's what it is. Yeah. Please.
Bravo. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> that is a celebration. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. I've, I'm really glad you came. I think this is going to be a favorite show of a lot, a lot of people in our audience. <laughs> you can get Al Yosha's tapes. We're going to make sure that if you want to get this playing, you can. And just send to us and say you want it. Al's tapes. Okay, I'll know who you mean. Uh, we don't have many concert pianists on here. Uh, and we'll send along to his ministry your request and so on. He'll be in touch with you, tell you what the tapes are and so forth. This is just, you know, we're living out the days of, of the prophet Zephaniah who said they'll lie down in the houses of Ashkelon in the evenings or, or the land covenant of Deuteronomy 30 uh, where God says, I'll bring you back from, from all over or, or Isaiah's pronouncements from the north and uh, from everywhere. Uh, the, people like this, you know, would have been lost and in, in, were lost for centuries. The, the talent that came out of Russia alone, if you listed only the musicians, you know, Isaac Stern once said, a cultural exchange between America and Russia means <laughs> the Russians send us their Jews from Odessa. We send them our Jews from Odessa. Uh, <laughs> that's only one town. Uh, God is bringing them out, and that's important. Ezekiel 37 wraps it up, the dry bones vision, verses 11 and 12. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open up your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. That is where eventually all Jewish people will end up in the coming tribulation, in the coming kingdom. The, the saved ones will be there. Be there and you'll hear Alyosha playing all the time. Won't that be wonderful? Uh, our offers uh, for music fans, we always offer our own stuff. So we have an album, uh, which is a piano album, In the Wilderness. <laughs> now look, I played it. It's not Alyosha, and I don't know what to say. Only the uh, spiritual part is equal, <laughs> okay? And uh, I think you know my playing after all these years. It's not concert piano, but it's sincere, okay? And our CD collection, The Works, all of Zola's songs, those are our first eight albums on CD. If you have a CD player, people have liked this uh, very much. The album is $12, The Works $49, and you get them at the post office box or call in to the uh, phone number with your credit card and Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem.